Good morning from Fresh Start. What a blessing it is to be back in the house of the Lord. What a blessing it is to be in God's Word. We are in Hosea chapter 4 this morning. Um, Hosea meaning salvation. That's what Father wants for His children. He said that in His Word that He would that none would perish, but all come to repentance. Repentance, through repentance, gains salvation. And uh, we know that through the studies that we have been doing, that Father has talked about a harlot in chapter 2 that Hosea is to marry. In uh, chapter 3, there was another uh, adulterous woman uh, that he was to marry. And uh, we see in the latter part of chapter 3, he said, Afterward, the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall revere the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. And we're looking for that. We're looking for those that may have a need to understand God's word a little deeper and hoping that uh, something be said this morning to encourage those. We'll be in chapter 4 this morning. And I uh, want to say this morning that we cannot apologize for the word of God. God's word will go out and touch the individual that it needs. Those that are listening, those that are participating in this Bible study time, he's not speaking to you. He's speaking to those of the disobedience of the house of Israel. He's talking to those that, uh, that have no desire to study and to just take a man's word for it and go for that. So nothing else be said. Let's go back right into Hosea chapter 4. And while you're turning this morning, we'll ask Father for his blessing. Precious Father, we come to you thanking you for another blessed day. We ask, Father, that you to open eyes and open ears to your word. Allow your word to land on fertile ground this morning, Father. Father, we'll give you the praise and the glory for all things. In the precious name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Hosea chapter 4 and verse number 1, and it reads, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. What a sad verse to place upon our neighbors, to place upon those that live in this nation, to place upon those that profess God as their Savior. For the Bible says here, that God has a controversy because there is no truth. There's no truth being taught inside the house of God today. These children of Israel, they go to a high hill. That's what the, the scripture talks about. They go to a high mountain. They go to a church house. And they do not receive the word of God. Yet they receive the philosophy of a man or the idea of a man and they leave God's word clean out of it. God said there is no truth nor mercy. What's this word mercy? This mercy is love. He said there is no love nor knowledge of God in the land. They think they know God. Many people like to talk about how that, boy, the Lord came down this morning at the church. And, boy, I mean, it, it, uh, the people just started jumping around and hollering and screaming and carrying on and, we need to be very careful about what spirit it is that we entertain. My father is not the author of confusion. Father is one who brings knowledge and understanding to his word. And that's what he's asking here. He said, hear the word of the Lord. Hear it. Read it. Study it. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 said, Study to show thyself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that's what Father wants done. To sum it all up, the question would be asked, What is it that God requires? God requires for you to know truth, to love Him, and to know what God expects of you. 
God expects of you to keep his feast days, his holy days, not to be entangled with the ways of the world, not to be entertaining uh, things that the world likes to entertain, but set aside the time to worship Father in the right way and to bring praise to him. But Father's got a controversy with Israel. Verse number two. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. There's no shame in this generation today. If there is a murder, it goes on and they try to find who it is that done it and, and then they may have put them in jail for a little while and then they let them out on their own recognizance. and the lying is and swearing is nothing more than a daily conversation anymore. It appears as if there's no conscience to the people. The committing adultery and breaking out, it, it, it's as if committing adultery is nothing. As if the wife or the husband, it, it just doesn't matter. It's a shame that many people have fallen underneath this dredge of the system and God's not happy with it and he said they break out and blood toucheth blood in Deuteronomy chapter 32 in verse number 35 he says to me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Fathers declared that judgment is his. It's not for us to judge. We are not to judge individuals. But it is Father that will bring that recompense upon individuals who think there is nobody looking, nobody listening, nobody knows. Father knows it all. And he's wrote a book about it. In verse number three, Therefore the land shall mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beast of the field and with the fowl of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. We see that in our nation today, that where the fowl have been slaughtered and uh, where the fish have been polluted, and uh, things are not as wholesome as they used to be. We have to be very careful about what we intake anymore because of all of the things that this world has allowed, uh, uh, pollution and uh, just destruction altogether. He said they languish. The people know that something's about to happen. But they don't do anything about it. Verse number four. Yet let no man strive, nor reprove another. For thy people are as they that strive with the priests. No one rebukes one another anymore. There's no one setting anyone straight any longer. Although many would say, well, it's not your place. It's not your place to tell an individual uh, how to live and uh, what to do. As a conversation, you're correct. But when teaching the Word of God... We must bring out God's word and illustrate God's word in the fashion that God wrote it. Indignation has come up in the face of God. God is not happy with this kind of thing. And he said, 
nor reprove for another, for thy people are as thy, they that strive with the priests. The priests don't even rebuke. They allow sodomy inside the house of God. They allow the same-sex marriage and uh, say that it's okay because uh, uh, they've got money and they put it in the offering plate and so uh, we ought not say anything. We should not talk about or bring up scriptures about really wonder why they only do a one verse because they pick one verse that makes everybody happy the word of God is not meant to hit you that are studying in this chapter many places of the word of God where God is angry with his children if you are studying his word if you are part of a teaching Bible study church, one who teaches the word of God line upon line and uh, precept upon precept, if you support that church and be a part of that, then God knows exactly where you are and where your heart is. And he loves you and he cares about you. But those that have no understanding and they doll themselves up on Sunday and march down to the house of God like they're doing God a service, it's a shame that God's children are not being taught. And it's high time that people listen to the word of God. Verse 5, Therefore shalt thou fall in thy day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. This, this part of the of the prophet shall fall. He's talking about the false prophet. The false prophet will fall. And with thee in the night. And I will destroy thy mother. And I will destroy the mother Israel. Because of the idolatry. The adultery that has been committed. Verse 6. Pay close attention to what verse 6 has to say. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Man, that hits home. That's a sad situation. He said here, he said, my people are destroyed. In other words, they're cut off. For lack of knowledge, they will not study the Word of God. They are fixed in their minds uh, of a rapture theory, of an any moment doctrine, that easy believism, and do not require God's Word in their life. They want more of the fairy tale, although. Many have said, you know, I, I, I can't find it anywhere in the Bible where uh, God's going to rapture us away and uh, where he's going to take us away like that and then leave uh, some behind. And Well, some ministers like to interpret God's word the way they want to, and that's a very dangerous thing. It's not a very smart idea to take God's word and change it. We are to teach God's word just as it is written. And the best thing that we have here in our hands is a King James Version Bible. We can learn God's word and know that Father is against things. If Father is against it, should we not be against it? Had a conversation with a man speaking about rapture and I just had to end the conversation. I asked him, I said, well, if God is against it, would you be against it? Well, well, sure I would. I said, have you not ever considered Ezekiel chapter 13? Well, I don't think I've ever read that. Well, that's the problem. Many have not read the word of God. Many have not studied, even though some say, well, I read the Bible in a year. This is not something just to read. It must be studied, and you must have the correct interpretation. 
How do you do that? Through the Strong's Exhausted Concordance. Through God's Word and through the Spirit of God. Allowing uh, God's Spirit to teach. If things become foreign in your life, we have a warning device. It's called the Holy Spirit of God. If something is not correct, the Holy Spirit of God will let us know. But friend, on the other token, on the other side of the, of the coin, if it is correct, then our spirit rejoices because it is being fed by the Holy Spirit of God. So important. He said, my people are destroyed. They're cut off for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Surely he won't reject those that love the Lord. Surely he won't reject somebody that goes to church every Sunday. Surely he won't reject somebody that professes Christ as their Savior. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 23 Let's read verse 21, chapter 7 in the book of Matthew, verse 21. He said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? 23, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that worketh iniquity. It's a sad situation. Terribly sad. That many that love the Lord, and I'm talking, there are many professions that people do from singing to working at the church and just all sorts of different jobs that are given. And these people love God, but they do not understand what is required of them. They have never been taught what is required. He said, I will also reject thee that thou shalt not be no priest to me. In other words, when entering into the millennial, they will not be priests. They will be those that will be taught in that day. They will be the ones that will enter in with a mortal soul, capable of dying if they do not participate properly during the millennial reign of Christ. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God, I will also forget thy children. What is the law of God? It's his Ten Commandments. We have a generation with no standards and no direction in front of us today. We have a generation that wants, but they don't want to do anything to do it or to gain it. And that's what God is highly upset about. Verse number seven. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. This has been changed. The scripture has here. It says, as they were increased, so they sinned against me. And it should read, and changing my glory into shame. There is no shame in the glory of God, but yet the way they proceed it, they are the ones that are changing God's glory into shame. Verse 8, They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. They eat up the sin offering which should never have been taken. The sin offering was for God. And it says here, They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. 
They encourage people to sin. You say, well, now, come on now, Brother Randall. Surely they don't, they don't do that. Well, they do it in a manner that's hidden. They want people to believe uh, that they're holy and that they are doing God's will. They sing that song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arm of God. Friends, you cannot get around God's arm. You cannot be around God unless you are following the ways that He wants you to. The students of this ministry, you understand exactly how Father feels. You've seen it. You've been around it. Many of us have been a part of it at one time. But thanks be unto God, we came out of Babylon. We came out of the confusion. Verse 9, And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doings. The people and the priests are ignorant of God's word. They are unlearned of the word of God. They do not know what God requires of them. Although Father has written it throughout all of his word, they just will not pick it up and study it. They would rather put more time in the building or their funding or uh, some big trip, but yet, People need to know the Word of God. They need God's Word today. This nation as we know it is dwindling to nothing. And it's all because of the Kenites. They have taken hold and turned what was good into a bad. Verse 10, For they shall eat, and not have enough. They shall commit whoredoms and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. <laughs> they eat and not have enough. Amos 8 and 11 comes into mind. That in this latter day there will be a famine not of bread and water but of hearing of the true word of God. They shall commit whoredoms and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed of the Lord. This is aimed at your preachers and your teachers. This is aimed at those that are responsible for teaching the Word of God. Verse 11, Whoredom and wine and new wine Take away the heart. This is a proclamation by Father. And he's telling you that whoredom and wine and new wine take away at the heart. The heart is your mind. It takes it away. Isaiah chapter 29. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 29. In verse number 8. Father has written it here in Isaiah. Isaiah has prophesied this, and uh, it's so true. He said in verse number 8, It shall even be as when a hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth, but he awaketh, and his soul is empty. Or when a thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, and his soul hath appetite. So shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. They go, they go outside the house of God. They leave God's house more confused than they did when they came in. They desire to be taught. 
but it's not in the quarterly. They desire the scriptures to be read, but it's not in the program. The program has Miss So-and-So singing for a while, and then another one standing and giving a testimony, and before you know it, the hour is gone. And, and God forbid that they stay longer than an hour. Verse 9, Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. What makes them stagger, Brother Randall? <laughs> Romans 11, chapter, chapter 11 and verse number 8. The spirit of slumber is given to them. They stagger, and actually it's a, <clears throat> it's a veil of protection for them but they are under a spirit of slumber. Verse 10, For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. We have so many professionals in the world today Many that profess they are professionals at this and professionals at that. But where are our professionals of the theology? Where are our professionals of God's Word? Bible teachers. Verse 11. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. <laughs> Those of you that have studied with us recently, we just finished the book of the Revelation. In chapter 22, we have exactly this same comment. In verse, chapter 22, in verse number 9, Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. Verse 10, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. So the book is not sealed. The word of God is of no private interpretation. It's meant for one to be able to go to the man of God, go to the woman of God, go to the priest, and ask them what thus saith the word of God. That's what they are paid for. That's why they have a retirement. That's why they have what they have, because they're supposed to be <laughs> teachers of the word of God. Verse 12, and the book is delivered to him that is not learned, the lay member, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. They sat in a Beth of Inn for 30 and 40 years. Beth of Inn. Beth meaning house. Of in meaning nothingness, house of nothingness. They sit in a house of nothingness for 30 to 40 years, and even the lay members still do not know anything of the Word of God. When you've got men that have been in the house of the Lord for 20, 30, 40 years and does not understand what the Passover is, It's a sad situation. No wonder the indignation has come up in God's eyes. Verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near with me. Start over. Verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me but have removed their heart far from me 
and the fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. The traditions of man has set people aside and made them afraid of God. Where God wants you to revere him and not to fear him. It's been said that we need more preachers to, to preach hell hot and, and heaven sweet. One should not have to put fear inside a person to get them to come and love the Lord. First and foremost, all the man of God can do is teach God's word. It's not up to the man of God or the woman of God not to save anyone. You place out the seeds and let them fall where they fall. What that individual does with it is their own recognizance. It's their situation. Many have come to know the Lord. Why is that? Because the Spirit of God draws them. The Spirit of salvation draws them. But yet, the ministers like to preach a message that a, an individual can't live. They like to teach in a way that people cannot live. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men, by their traditions. So back in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 11, whoredom and wine and new wine take away at the heart. What is this new wine, Brother Randall? <laughs> it's a, a rapture theory. Although it was introduced in 1830, it's new unto the Father, unto the people. Father, he knew it way before. But people love it. They attach themselves to it because it gives them hope. It gives them hope to where they don't have to do anything. An everlasting salvation. Salvation is everlasting for those that deserve it. Once saved, always saved. That's a dangerous statement. Verse number 12. My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declare unto them. For the spirit of whoredoms uh, have caused them to err, and they have gone a whoring uh, from under their God. Their staffs declare. I want to read to you in Matthew chapter 24. <clears throat> Verse 37. And it reads, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. This flood is not a flood of water, but it's a flood of lies. Lies that will be brought out by the Antichrist. Verse 40 is why I came. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. 41. Two women shall be grinding at the meal. The one shall be taken and the other left. Why did you read that, Brother Randall? Because it says here in verse 12 of Hosea chapter 4, he said, My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declare unto them. For the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err, and they have gone a whoring from under their God. In other words, 
new teaching, new wine. Oh, I want to be the first one taken. I want to be that first person taken. That is their concept. That's how they teach, to be the first one taken. But what does it say here in verse 40? Then shall two be in the field. What is the field? The field is the world. That's where we are to work. The one shall be taken and the other left. Left to do what? To be working faithfully. Waiting for their Lord. Where are they taken to, Brother Randall? They're not taken anywhere. Spiritually, they are taken. Spiritually, their souls have been snatched by the Antichrist. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Because of the new wine, because of the teaching that is going on today. And many fall for it. Many fall for the whoredom and the idolatry that is brought out. And they fall headlong over heels for it. Verse 13. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oak and poplars and elms because of the shadow of thereof is good. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom and your spouses shall commit adultery. Hmm. He said here in verse 13, he said that they burn incense upon the hills. They worship God in their houses. In the houses of God. Under oaks and poplars and elms. In other words, in the shadow. It's the same concept of grove worship. As they do these things, uh, they think nobody sees them. He said, Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. They commit adultery by not teaching them about the true Christ. They do not teach them that there are two Christs that will come. They have them set up and ready for the first one on the scene. They have them set up and ready for the first Jesus that appears. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3, it plainly tells us. And why... A minister of God cannot see. He said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Except there come a falling away first. That means the apostasy. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. They tried to explain this out way out of context. They, they try to say that Judas was the son of perdition and uh, they try their best to uh, take away the understanding of God's word. It's plain and simple. He said, let no man deceive you. What does that mean? That means that man is out to try to deceive you if you aren't careful. By any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Meaning that there will be a time of an apostate state. In other words, the people will change their heart and mind from the one they're to be waiting upon to the one that they can see. They no longer wait for the true Christ because there is one in front of them. They go whoring after this one because he comes in peacefully and prosperously just like one would think that Christ would come his message will be I'm here to rapture you away I'm here to take you home many 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 of this world will fall for the first antichrist they'll fall for the first Jesus that appears 
verse 14. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery, for themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore, the people that doeth not understand shall fall. Woe to the husbands and the false ministers. There is a place where we are to be in charge of our home, men. Some homes doesn't have a man in it. So there needs to be a leader of spiritual guidance in the home. There needs to be criteria set. There needs to be rules set in a home. Same way that you would teach your children when they get too old and they don't want to follow your rules, they're no longer able to stay inside your home. God feels the same way. Father wants his children to wake up. He wants his children to understand that they are being taught lies. They are being taught fairy tales. And they do not study God's word. Verse 15. Though thou Israel play the harlot, yet let not Judah offend. And come not ye unto Gilgal. Neither go you up to Bethavin, nor swear... The Lord liveth. <laughs> wow. God doesn't want them to go to a house of nothingness. God does not want them to be a part of a church that is not teaching his word. And again, that's what this word means, Beth Avin. It means a house of nothingness. Verse 16. For Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Mm -mm -mm. When a lamb has its head down and it's feeding, very vulnerable. You don't want to feed your lambs in a large area, open wide. Why is that? Well, they're very vulnerable. They're vulnerable to the adversary that comes. Verse 16, For Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Verse 17, Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. This is symbolically of the, uh, the ten tribes of Israel. Verse 18. Their drink is sour. They have committed whoredom continually. Her rulers uh, with shame do love uh, give ye. This word give ye is, uh, in other words, Changing over. So he said their drink is sour and they have committed whoredoms continually. Her rulers with shame do love. and Changing over. In other words, they change like the weather. They had their minds on the buildings and projects and events and raising money. God's house is a house of prayer. Plain and simple. I've never understood how a true man of God or a true women of God could allow someone to have a yard sale in the house of God, a bake sale in the house of God. If you're teaching God's word line upon line and you're feeding the flock your ministry will have no problem whatsoever. 
God will make sure that ministry flourishes and grows. When you have to go out and beg and stand on the corner and open the doors to anything and everything and have items inside the house of God for sale, going about it the wrong way. Verse 19, the wind hath bound her up in her wings, and they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. The wind hath bound her up. In other words, in the spirit of whoredoms has bound her up in her wings, in her skirt, and they shall be ashamed. And they will be ashamed, as we have read in Matthew 7. He'll tell them, depart from me, for I never knew you. It'll be a shame that they won't understand. They will not understand that they are being rejected by the true and living Christ. But as I've said before, God does not allow a harlot around him. God wants nothing to do with a harlot. One that goes whoring after any doctrine or any new wine. Let's go into chapter 5. Chapter 5 and verse 1, and it reads, Hear ye this, O priests, and hearken ye house of Israel, and give you ear, O house of the king. For judgment is towards you, because you have been a snare on Mitzvah, and a net, spread upon Tabar. Mizpah is a watchtower. That's what it means. And the snare that's come upon them because they are not teaching God's word. They're not teaching the truth. They give out every kind of Bible that there is in the world other than the true Bible, other than the true word of God different translations and they change it and bring up different concepts and get completely away from the Word of God. In Ezekiel chapter 3, God has said there in verse 17, He said, Set, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord at my mouth and give them warning from me. That's what a man of God is to do. That's what a teacher is to do. Place it out there and allow them to deal with it. Allow them to use it and chew on it and ponder it. And hopefully come to a point of repentance for salvation, for eternal salvation. Verse 2. And the revolters are profound to make slaughter, though I have been a rebuker of them all. This revolters are the apostates. These are those that have changed their heart from the true and living God to one that is fake. Why did they do that? Because they were convinced. They believe an any moment doctrine. They believe what the minister is saying. Nobody goes through and checks out the teacher. If there's anything that I can say this morning, check out your teacher. Be sure that your teacher is helping you. Be sure that your teacher is providing truth for you and not watered down word of God. Three, I know Ephraim, this is the British people, and Israel, this is all the other nine tribes, is not hid from me. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom, and Israel is defiled. Their whoredom is their idolatry. And Israel is defiled. Let me say this, that God keeps great records. Until there is a point 
individually of repentance until the nation comes to a place of repentance, until it is a decree by their government or their king that they are to repent, they don't understand to. Four, they will not frame their doings to turn unto their God, for the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord. Although a few are being called out this morning, although a few are being woke up from a deep sleep, and they are living today because they decided in their heart they're going to study the Word of God. They're going to know what thus saith the Word of God. It's a very interesting book. 66 different books inside the house of, or in the Word of God. And it should be intriguing to an individual, man or woman, boy or girl, to understand the Word of God. Many great men and women have come through this world and have performed some great tasks. They've left their name and their footprint. But friends, I can tell you this, that there's no greater thing in this world than to know the Word of God and prepare yourself to meet your God. Five, and the pride of Israel doeth testify to his face. Therefore shall Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity. Judah also shall fall with them. This, their pride is their arrogance. He said, and their arrogance of Israel doeth testify to his face. Whose face? To fathers. Verse 6, they shall go with their flocks, and with their herds to seek the Lord, but they shall not find him. He hath withdrawn himself from them. He hath withdrawn himself from them. They want to be the first one taken, as we have read in Matthew 7. Or excuse me, Matthew 24. They are the first ones, uh, supposedly, that are to be taken. And they don't realize that they are taken out of season. They are taken in a time when they are not to be taken. They are harvested in a time when there is no harvest. Seven, they have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for they have begotten strange children. Now shall a moth devour them with their portions. <laughs> Now shall a month devour them with their portions. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for they have begotten strange children, children of apostate. They do not realize that they are bringing up people in this nation today to believe in any moment doctrine, to believe in a fairy tale. And they've already changed their hearts over and preparing themselves for the first one to come. Now shall a month devour them with their portions. This month, he's talking about a new moon. We had it over here in Hosea 2 and 11. 2 and 11, and it reads, And I will also cause all her mirth, in other words, her gladness and laughter, to cease her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbath, and all her solemn feasts. Verse 8. Blow ye the coronet in Gibeah, and the trumpet in Ramah. Cry aloud at Bethaven after thee, O Benjamin. Verse 9. Ephraim shall be desolate, in the day of rebuke. Among the tribes of Israel have I made known that which shall surely be. 
this desolation, this desolate. He says, Ephraim shall be desolate. In other words, with no truth. To not have any of the word of God. To follow after traditions of man. Ten. The princes, these are your Kenites, of Judah were like them that removed the bound. Therefore, I will pour out my wrath upon them like water. You know what this bound is? This bound is like the inheritance that God gives. It's like a property line, and it's stationary there. But yet, the Kenites like to take it and move it to their portion and move it toward them to gain more and more and more, and no man knows. God said, therefore, I will pour out my wrath upon them like water. Eleven, Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandment. In Jeremiah chapter 17, In verse number 5, the word of the Lord said, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in the man, and maketh his flesh his arm, and whose heart do departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heat in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in the salt land, and not inhabited. That's when the word of God will not be found. That's when Joel chapter 1 comes into play. When the, the locusts and the caterpillar and the palmer worm and all these that come and devour, it will make it a desolate place. They will not be able to find the word of God. He said it will be like a parched place in the wilderness in a salt land, and not inhabited. Verse 7 is you, my friend. This is you. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Verse 8. For he shall be as a tree planted by the water, and spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat comes. Amen. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding uh, fruit. Don't stop teaching the word of God. Just because Amos 8 and 11 is there, saying that there is a famine in the land, do not stop teaching the word of God. Do not stop passing God's word along. You just never know, placing one truth in the mind of an individual, what it can do, regardless who they are, regardless their race, male or female. God loves them all. Nine, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10 goes down to say, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Christ said, you'll know a tree by the fruit that it bears. We are not to judge a man. We're not to judge a woman. But you can be a fruit inspector. You can know the fruit that an individual bears. Just take a moment and listen to what they have to say. Back in Hosea chapter 5 and verse 11 again, he said, Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandment. He willingly took the gospel that is being given in the Beth of Ian. They willingly take it. Unlike some of you that had stood up and said, you know what? 
I just do not understand or believe that. I can no longer be a part of this. You made a stand in your home. You made a stand in your life. And you said, I'm going to get away from this because it doesn't make sense and it's contrary to the Word of God. And the Spirit of God has come upon you and done His best to try to help you. That's why we're learning this morning. Verse 12, Therefore I will be unto Ephraim as a moth, and to the house of Judah as rottenness. Mm -mm -mm. He said, Therefore I will be unto Ephraim as a moth. You know what a moth does? It eats clothing. What are we to be clothed with? With our righteousness. God said he's going to eat away their righteousness. Eat at it. Because it has no wealth. It has no truth. And the house of Judah as rottenness. Verse 13. When Ephraim saw his sickness, and Judah saw his wound, then went Ephraim to the Assyrian, and sent to King Jerob, Yet could he not heal you, uh, nor cure you of your wound. This Assyrian is the same as we understand as the Antichrist today. Now, I know we're talking about back in the days of Jerob. But we also can distinguish this as the Antichrist. The great Assyrian. And he's come to do a work of God. He's come to do God's work. How is it that he is doing God's work if it is he is doing evil? God's allowing this to be poured out on these people, those that have no desire to study his word. Verse 14. For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion and as a young lion to the house of Judah. You know what a lion does or a young lion does? He tears and he chews and destroys you can't even tell what it was uh, after a young lion got a hold of it. I, even I, will tear and go away. I will take away and none shall rescue him. There'll be five months of chastisement that'll come upon the people. It'll be a tribulation. This is your first trib. The tribulation of the Antichrist. Verse 15 to come to a close. And I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. This is God's prayer. This is God's hope for Israel that they will seek him early. They will seek him before the coming of the Antichrist. I pray something's been said this morning to encourage or maybe to enlighten or to open up the minds of an individual to know that they are to learn God's word line upon line. Not an easy believism or a feel-good type of service. There's times when Father comes in and there needs to be correction. Many of Israel today have left God. They do not understand that they have left God. They do not know that they have left God. But through their worship, they have left God and left Him clean out. We appreciate you this morning. That's Hosea chapter 4 and chapter 5. As we get on through chapter 6, boy, I tell you, the book of Hosea is a very powerful book, very understanding. It's a minor prophet. It's not minor because of its teachings. It's minor because of the length of the 
book that it is. But God wants you to understand. And we appreciate you. Thank you so much for being a part of our Bible study this morning. We appreciate your letters and your cards and your tithes and your offerings. We thank you. If we've helped you, let us know, would you? Until the next time, may the Lord richly bless.